Hey there, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop here in the Nashville studios today. And in front of me, I've got some things that we're going to talk about today. Uh, first and foremost is a brand new Glock 19 in the box. Glock 19 Gen 5. All right. And this is a trigger weight. It's our dead weight trigger weight. It's kind of a new item for us that allows you to measure trigger pull, which is what this video is about. We're going to be talking about improving lightning the trigger of the factory Glock with our double diamond 3.5 pound connector. So, all these things are going to come together. This other thing right here, this is my uh, armorer's uh, uh, donut of uh, painter's tape that will help me with the disassembly process. And I'll show you how that works. So, um, first of all, let's talk about trigger pull. <clears throat> Most people are aware that when you're shooting, the lighter the trigger, the better the accuracy. And why is that? You know, because, you know, when you think about it, well, what, what's the difference, right? Okay, so as you squeeze or pull the trigger, if the trigger is heavier, longer, you will disturb the sight picture. You have a better chance to disturb the sight picture, should I say, than if it's a lighter trigger. Now, long-range rifle shooters know this, you know, for years. They've always wanted that super lightweight trigger. Two pounds, one and a half pounds. Sometimes there are, are dual triggers, like a set and then a just a hair trigger, basically, uh, to uh, allow you to execute the shot without disturbing the sight picture or moving the gun as you pull the trigger. Now... <clears throat> Most of us who shoot a lot, who understand the concept, you know, can, you know, sit there and, and line up the front and rear sights, squeeze, 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 bang, and keep that pretty much in a line. Now, the gun's always going to be moving. When you're holding it out here, no matter who you are, it's moving. If you have a brace, it's a different story. But when you're shooting a handgun, the gun is going to move because, well, that's your body's moving. Your heart is beating. You just can't keep it totally still. However, the ability to hold the sights and uh, keep it on the, on the target, the sight picture, uh, is, you know, fairly easy and fairly understood. What it really comes down to for competition shooters and people who want to shoot in self-defense, it's not really about that first shot as much as it is the follow-up shots. Being able to shoot multiple shots and maintaining the sight picture, sight alignment, sight picture, throughout that process. So the lighter the trigger, the better you'll be. Because the first shot, yeah, it's relatively easy. We get it. It's that second, third rapid shot where you start to yank on the trigger. And the heavier it is, the more you're pulling on it and the more the gun is going to move. And hence, it's going to affect your accuracy. So what I want to show you right now is the Glock factory trigger, which is okay. It's set at like five and a half, maybe six pounds, depending upon you know, the gun. And they do vary a little bit. Um, and then show you how we can reduce that with just a simple drop-in part, which is our double diamond three and a half pound connector. And uh, prove it to you with this dead weight trigger weight. Okay? So, first things first, let's go ahead and take this uh, Glock 19 Gen 5, brand new, apart. Now, the disassembly procedure I'm going to show you is really specific to the Gen 5. However... Gen 5s just have a couple modifications. Gen 3s, Gen 4s, almost the same disassembly procedure. The big difference on a Gen 5 that we're going to look at right now is that Gen 5 has only one pin, which is the trigger pin, versus a trigger pin and a locking block pin on a Gen 3 and Gen 4 will have two pins above the trigger. Every Glock has the trigger housing pin, which will be located back here in the grip. But we're talking about the trigger pin, on the Gen 5, that's the only pin you'll see. And then on the uh, Gen 3 and Gen 4, it'll have a locking block pin right above that. Concept is the same since that. The only other big difference that you're going to see here is the ambidextrous or uh, uh, slide stop that is on both sides. Slide stop. That's also the slide release. So uh, Glock in their Gen 5 has put it on both sides. So now... You'll see it's a horseshoe shape that allows you to operate it if you're left-handed over here. Not a bad option. Uh, for those of us who are right-handed, you may find that that is a little bit cumbersome. 
and I'll show you a trick for that when we get this thing apart. All right, so first things first, fingers off the trigger, guns pointing in a safe direction. I'm going to go ahead and drop the magazine, inspect the magazine. It is empty. Good thing, right? And now before I do anything, I want to pull the slide back and inspect the chamber to make sure it too is empty. And visual inspection, it's empty. Now I'm going to pull the trigger in a safe direction. Always keeping the gun pointing in a safe direction, loaded or not. All right, that's just simple math. If you keep it simple, uh, you know, bad things won't happen. Because even if I accidentally shoot the gun and it's pointed in a safe direction, I didn't hurt anybody except my television set, which I can replace. All right, so always keep the gun pointing in a safe direction, loaded or not. That's a good rule to follow. Okay, safety stuff out of the way now. Gun is ready to be manipulated here in this studio environment. And I always want to make sure, again, that uh, there's no ammunition in this room. There's uh, no loaded magazines around. I can't inadvertently load this gun because, uh, well, if, if I could, I probably would. <laughs> so I, I eliminate the ability to uh, have any mistakes by uh, eliminating ammunition from the workspace. So it's very important. I think it's a real good habit for you too. This is the dead weight trigger weight. We're going to go ahead and measure the Glock factory connector and measure the, the weight. And they're typically from the factory between five, five and a half, six pounds. Right here, I've got the three pound weight on the bottom and I've got the uh, two pound weight. So there's five. I'm going to start with, uh, let's say uh, we start with five and a half because that's kind of, you know, where most of these break. Again, each Glock is kind of individually assembled. Each one is going to be slightly different. Rack the slide. Five and a half pounds here with the dead weight trigger weight. And this is the best way I feel to measure guns. Ready? There's five and a half. And it's not going to go. Okay, so I'm going to do the quarter pound weight, which is five and three quarters. And I would think it should be happening right now. Come on, baby. All right, well, then I'll take these two off and put the full one pounder on here. Okay, and still not happening. Here we go. There we go. Yep, okay, so that's the six pounder. So it looks like it's going to be between five and three quarter and six pounds. I think it's what's going to happen here. Let's see here. Yep. There it is right there. And one more time, just for a good measure. So six seems to be the weight that we're looking at. Yeah. A lot of it depends where it's going to be resting on there. But, um, you know, what I'm hoping to demonstrate is that the factory Glocks are typically five and a half to six pounds. And that's what we're finding right here. That's a six pound weight. I think, you know, I could probably... You know, play with a little bit more, maybe have a break on five and a half. I've had a break at, you know, six, five and three quarters right in that ballpark. But that is the, uh, the standard from the Glock factory. Now, let's go ahead and install the three and a half pound connector from Glock store. Now, to disassemble the Glock Gen 5 is the same as the Gen 3 and Gen 4. Basically, take your grip and wrap your hand up over the slide just like that. Some people have trouble with that, so I want to make sure you see what I'm trying to do. I want to just go ahead and wrap my hand up over the slide. So I'm holding it kind of like that. The reason I want to do this is because I just want to pull back on the slide a little bit just to take pressure off of the slide lock. Slide lock is also known as a takedown lever, and it's on both sides. It runs the whole way through the gun, and it actually locks the slide onto the frame. So I pull it back just about a quarter of an inch, taking pressure off that spring, and then I pull down on both sides. So thumb and forefinger, pull down, hold down. As I pull down, I hold it, and then I release the slide and walk the slide off. Now be very careful. Sometimes the slide can fall off by itself, and if it falls down and hits a hard object, it could dent the nose ring on that slide. And then you're basically out of luck because uh, it's very hard to straighten that back up and get it back into perfect. Sometimes they crack and it's, you know, obviously not going to be operational. If you do something like that, and if it's a brand new gun, I bet you Glock would replace it for you. So that's how good Glock is. You know, they'll you know, just call them up and say, hey, my slide is cracked. They may charge you a little fee, but at the end of the day, they will give you a new slide when you send the other one back. So, okay, so this is the upper. This is the lower. We're going to go ahead and put the upper 
aside because we're really working with the lower part. Now, this is where my, my gunsmith donut comes in play here, okay? So I put it down here like this, and now it's nice about it. It's soft, right? Okay, so I can lay the frame on it, and I can kind of beat all over it, but it's not going to interfere or scratch or, or mar the plastic or polymer frame. Uh, you need a punch, and um, I like to have several punches available because you'll see how I'll use them. Uh, it's a 332nd inch punch, uh, and we do sell punch kits on our website, so check that out if you need a punch. Uh, it's very important. The um, first thing we're going to do is take out the um, trigger pin. It's a little tricky sometimes because it is captured inside by the slide stop. So there's a little bit of a, of a, of a ring there. There's a little cutout on the, uh, uh, the pin itself, and it'll get captured there. So you can beat on it all day long with a hammer, and it may not come out. The trick is to manipulate the slide stop as you push this down. So here's how I like to do this. It almost needs three hands. So if your wife is around, she can come over and kind of hold this up here like that. But I'll take a hammer, okay? This is a uh, rubber mallet, basically, or just a, a nylon head hammer. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the punch here on top of the pin. And then I'm gonna use my other finger just to raise up this slide stop, okay? So I just wanna bring it up because when I bring it up, I take pressure off of that notch and then I can go ahead and use my hammer and punch it straight out. And I, I made it look easy. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes you have to jiggle the slide stop, especially on the Gen 3s, Gen 4s, jiggle them a little bit, move them in, in and out. But the concept is, is to release the trigger pin off of these little notches that you'll find inside the trigger pin. I don't know if you can get in close here, but I think you can see them there. I'll get a little light on there, and you can see the, these little notches right here. So those notches actually kind of hold that pin in place so it doesn't walk out when you're shooting. And um, then I'll just drop that straight into my little donut hole. Now, the next pin I'm going to take out is fairly easy. Uh, this is a uh, steel pin. The next pin is actually a nylon pin, and it's back here in the, um, the grip, and this is the trigger housing pin. So I can just take my punch, kind of line it up, and just kind of push straight down on it, and it usually comes right out, just like that. So there it is. Grab hold of it, drop it also in there. And this is the uh, nylon or plastic pin. All right, and now we do sell a, uh, a, a stainless steel pin kit for these in different colors if you wanna uh, explore that a little bit and, and be able to uh, customize your gun. Next, we're gonna go ahead and take out the uh, locking block, which is this piece right here. All right, so the locking block comes out. It's kind of stuck in there with uh, uh, some friction. However, it is captured by that trigger pin. So you'll see the hole in it when we bring it out. Here it comes. I'm just going to pry it out. Once you get it started, you can just grab hold of it and pull it out. And see that hole right there? That uh, trigger pin goes right through it, just like so. And it captures it into the frame, as well as the trigger and the slide stop, which I'm about to show you right now. This is the slide stop. And see that hole right there? That pin that we just talked about also goes through there. And you see how it lines up with those notches? So if I get it lined up with the notches and I put a little pressure on it, it will be stuck there. But if I jiggle it just a little bit, I can pull it out. So that's the slide release or slide stop. And you'll see how it is a horseshoe shape, and it will allow you to operate it both ways. Now, here's my trick. If you're right-handed and you find that this is bothersome, not only for your hand or your, you know, when you're holding the gun and you're keeping the trigger off the finger, you know, your finger off the trigger and you have your, gun, your trigger along the frame like this, sometimes that irritates you. It irritates me. Um, what we have done, and you can do, it's simple. You know, you don't have to send it in or anything like that. Just... Dremel this piece right off. Just cut it off. You don't need it. You're not left-handed. So it'll not stick out. Just dremel everything out except for the part that, uh, you know, stays in the gun. So you just take that piece off there like that, and all of a sudden, it won't interfere with holsters, won't interfere with your grip, and you'll just act like it was never there. So that's a, a nice little sidebar you can do with your Glock uh, Gen 5 Glocks if you don't have any need for that left-handed operation all right now so i've got the other pieces out now here comes the entire trigger housing and trigger assembly so we grab hold of the 
ejector, which is this guy right here, that ejects the shells out. Going to grab hold of that, lift it straight up, and here comes the entire trigger mechanism. Now, the Gen 5 Glocks use a different mechanism to hold uh, the trigger into the trigger housing. It's kind of a stirrup concept. Uh, Maybe hard to see here. I don't know if you can get in close. Um, so the stirrup there, let's see here. There it is right there. See how it, it, it does have the same spring concept. goes back and forth. However, it doesn't have a trigger spring like the Gen 3s and Gen 4s. So to take that out, you just pull forward a little bit, twist, and let go, and see how the trigger bar comes right out. And there's the stirrup in there. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see if I can get you in there. You can see that little piece right there. That's where the trigger bar, the this front portion of the cruciform, goes in. And when we put it back together, I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty simple, but it, some people have a little bit of difficulty getting that thing locked up. And it is different than the Gen 3 and Gen 4 guns. Okay, so now this is the trigger housing. <clears throat> it really has uh, several parts in it. It's got the actual plastic housing itself. It's got a spring inside. Uh, it's got a... Um, kind of an axle for the spring or a, a, a rod that the, you know, the spring goes around. And it's got the uh, stirrup itself, and then it also has the, uh, three, the connector. This is the Glock factory connector. Now, to take it out, you can pull on it and pry on it, or just go around to the back side here using your punch and just push it straight out. So I'll usually kind of lock it in there and just kind of push down, and out it comes. <clears throat> and this is the factory connector. Okay? And, you know, like I said, there's nothing wrong with this. It's just that we've developed a better one that gives you a lighter trigger pull. So we saw that that factory trigger pull was approximately five and a half or so, six pounds. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and drop the three and a half pound connector, our double diamond three and a half pound connector. And we're going to get this thing down right now to about four to four and a half. Now, you'll say this, you're going to say to me, well, gee, that's a three and a half pound connector. Why isn't it three and a half pounds? Well... The reason is that once you shoot this thing a thousand or so rounds, it's going to find itself out to three and a half or so. And that's the same with the Glock factory. It's going to go from six, five and a half down to about four and a half, five. They will drop down based upon some action. So uh, we'll talk about that as we install. So here's the three and a half pound connector. I'm going to go ahead and uh, open it up and get this guy installed. So the installation is fairly simple. You drop it right into the slot. The small leg goes into the hole, just like so. And kaboosh. That's it. So that's it right there. Now we take our trigger to go back to uh, the installation or the, the reassembly. And we're going to take that front part of the cruciform and we're going to capture it into the stirrup. Now, there's a little stirrup there, so it's going to be hard to show you exactly, but here's how we do it. We kind of go in there as an angle. We get it there lined up. We get it captured, and we pull it forward, and that's basically it right there. Now I've got it captured, and I can see if you can see that. Yeah, just like that. And it's pretty simple. You just got to kind of go in an angle a little bit just to be able to get it started and then twist it so it goes into the back side, it being the cruciform into the back side of the trigger housing. And um, then once it's there... You take this entire mechanism and drop it into the frame. And we're going to go uh, trigger first, should I say, or should I say trigger housing first. Keeping our trigger uh, so that it gets in there too. Actually, let's go with that like so. And they go in together. And then once you get it started, you kind of just push it straight down. And there it is. It is now seated and ready to go. Now, one good thing to do at this point, is just look through the hole and say, oh yeah, I can see some daylight. Everything looks like it's lined up. So the trigger itself has a hole in it. And now I'm looking right through the frame, the trigger hole, and the other frame, the other side. So, okay, it looks good so far, right? Next thing we want to do is drop in the slide stop, also known as the slide release. <laughs> And it goes in straight uh, over top, just like so. You know, you'll want to make sure it lines up with this little piece out here on both sides. And it just drops right in. 
And it too, again, you look inside there and say, hey, wow, I can see uh, I can see daylight. Now I see a little bit of a half moon concept going there. That's just because I got to push that down a tad and kind of get it lined up. And once I do that, it's looking good. Now, finally, we take our locking block and we drop the locking block straight in, just like so. And I can just push this in with my hand. It goes right in the frame. And again, I'm going to look inside there, and my holes are looking pretty good. If they're not lined up for whatever reason, take your punch, drop it in there, and kind of get them all lined up. Just like that. Now, take my pin, and get it started. My nylon mallet. And tap it in. Look both sides. I can true it up with my punch just to make it equidistant on both sides. And do you hear that little click? I don't know if you heard it, but that means what happened. Once it clicked, that means that the slide lock, slide stop, excuse me, the slide release, this piece right here, actually clicked into that little notch. So just by pushing it in so that it's equidistant on both sides, I heard it click, and that means it's locked in. Pretty simple. Now, last piece will be the trigger housing pin. When I'm putting the pins in, I'm going from the right side into the left. When I take them out, I've been taking them out from the left side. And that's just an old school habit. It used to be that many pins were kind of designed that way. But an old gunsmith told me one time that it's kind of a good habit to have because that way you don't uh, uh, have uh, uh, any consistent uh, uh, wallowing in and out of the holes. That's exactly what we said. You don't wallow out the holes. <laughs> so uh, we want to keep our holes nice and tight. So you want to be very careful not to have a pin or a punch that's too big. You don't want to get in there and, and you know, kind of round out that thing because you want it to be tight because you don't want those pins to, to walk out by themselves. And again, they, they won't, but uh, it's just it also looks better just not to have your holes all boogered up. Okay, so this is the uh, trigger housing pin. I'm just going to tap it in with a hammer. Now again, this one, I can go ahead with my punch and true it up too because it's kind of hard to get in there with a hammer the way it's designed. Just push it down. And I'll look on the other side. It looks like it's even on both sides, which is perfect. And they've got a little cut out there so it doesn't interfere with your grip. Okay, so we've got the three and a half pound connector installed. So I'll go ahead and put the upper back on. And before I do that, I'm going to show you a little trick too. Oil is a good thing. Uh, this is our little gun butter thing. The thing I like about gun butter and some of the other oils we sell is it's got this needle point adapter. This makes all the difference in the world. First of all, you're not spilling oil all over the place. And second, you can be very, very exact. Glock has a couple recommended oiling places. One of them is actually on the connector itself, this little ear. So what happens is the trigger bar runs next to that. So we're going to go ahead and put a little drop of oil right there on that, underneath that ear. That oil will migrate down onto the trigger bar as we cycle the slide and it will help reduce the uh, overall trigger pull somewhat because it's metal on metal contact. Just a little bit of oil for your uh, friction points. So that's one of the points that Glock likes you to oil by the way. Slide goes back on and then to lock it on, you've got to go through the lock of the cycle. And now it's locked in place. And we always want to test two things. We want to test the actual pull of the trigger and then keep the trigger pull, pulled back in its rearward position, and then the release. Nice and crisp. Release. Nice and crisp. So you're, you're, you're testing two things. One, the actual trigger pull itself, but two, the reset of the trigger so that it does, in fact, function as intended. And I can actually feel that it's a little bit lighter than it was when we actually had the factory in there. Now, like I said, you work this thing several thousand times and it will be lighter because that metal to metal contact will find itself a little bit and uh, be able to uh, uh, get lighter. Here's our trigger uh, device. Remember the factory was about five and a half. So we're going to start with five right now.
and just like that, it's not going to be five. So I'm going to take the three pounder off. This is two. And I will add back a one and another one, which is four, and another, uh, another one and a half right here. So now we have two, three, four, and a half. So this is probably where it's going to break. And again, people are going to say, well, geez, a three and a half pound connector. Well, yes, it is. And it will be with a little bit of action. So see if we can get this thing to break for us. Ready? And boom, there it is. So it's just a four and a half, which is where I thought it would be and where it should be at this venture. Yep. There it is. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just trying to be very exact. One more time. And yep, there it is. So it's four and a half. I've got a quarter pound weight here. It'd be four and three quarters. It should break almost instantly here. Yeah. So that's how you can improve your trigger. And I will tell you the Three and a half pound connector does two things. One, it does shorten the stroke overall. So it's not quite as long as the factory connector, which is important because the shorter it is, the less likely you are to disturb that sight picture. But it is also lighter. And I can feel that right there. So that first one is really good. Now there's a couple other things you can do to really lighten this thing up. That'd be reducing the uh, trigger spring weight or the... Uh, firing spring, spring weight because you're pulling against that a little bit. We'll show you that in another video. So if you want to get even a lighter trigger and a better trigger overall, you would go with the pyramid trigger, which is a, one of our number one selling items. The pyramid trigger actually is a whole new shoe. It's much more comfortable on your finger. It's uh, uh, a series of uh, springs as well as uh, the connectors already included, as well as a, um, uh, a different... Um, safety plunger, which is on the top, and, and it really makes a huge difference. So that would be uh, the way to get the ultimate trigger is the pyramid trigger. Here, we've gone ahead with just a simple, low-cost installation that you can do yourself at home and made the Glock trigger demonstratively one pound less. And over time, it'll be even lighter and better than the Glock factory trigger. So this is the uh, three and a half pound double diamond connector. I am Lenny McGill. This, of course, is the Glock store here in Nashville. We would invite you to come down and, and check out the store, shoot in our, one of our Shoot 270 rooms. It's a fantastic experience. I know you'll love it, and uh, I do appreciate you watching. Join, become a member, because we got lots of videos coming, and a lot that we've already done. So we'll hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.